might be anti-Hindu and you don't even know it. Nityandam, I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam. Today's video, um, again, responds to um, arguments, concepts uh, that are against Hinduism and that they are using to abuse uh, disciples and gurus. Hinduism is basically the science of life. And by science of life, uh, what I mean is how to experience consciousness and how you realize, how you can realize that you are that consciousness. Um, so one thing that happens a lot if you follow Swamiji is you would see that there's a lot of people abusing Swamiji. A lot of Indians also. Many Indians will be, will be claiming, oh, we are Indians, we know Hinduism from the beginning, we know Swamiji is fake, Swamiji is a fraud. And they will use these arguments. First is, if you're born Hindu, that does not mean you're a Hindu. Because Hinduism now has been diluted. Since the Englishmen came, they destroyed the roots of Hinduism and they have um, and they have implanted their concepts in it. So Hinduism, the authenticity and the purity of Hinduism is very rare nowadays. Uh, some comments were saying, you know, why, why are you using Hindu? You should use the word Bharat. Um, yes, Bharat was the original uh, was the original nation, I guess, or I don't know what is the right word, but Bharat was that. And when the Englishman came, they created this word India and then they labeled everything within India. But the thing is that the, the spirit of Bharat is, is, is almost inexistent in today's world. It is just a memory and something that uh, some people are proud of and some people have forgotten. Um, but Bharat was definitely the right way to exist. But after the Englishman came and because in the West, um, especially yeah, when in Europe, when they started to go everywhere to, um, to conquer and take and convert and all these things into various things, they created their own labels and India did fall into that and they created this word India. And now everything is labeled as that. But um, one thing I want to share is that Swamiji was sharing that you need to discover Hinduism for you to be Hindu. Hindu is not um, a socio-cultural thing where I am born Hindu. No. If you are born in a Hindu family, if you live Hinduism, if you experience Hinduism, then you are a Hindu. If you do not live Hinduism, then how can you call yourself a Hindu? It is, it is only a social-cultural thing. And nowadays, that's what I find very unfortunate, is that many people they claim they are Hindu, uh, but they're making these claims from the, um, the space of that social cultural thing. They don't, ex they don't experience, they have not experienced Hinduism. They do not understand the fundamental principles of Hinduism. Many people will use these big, these big words such as Satya, Truth and all these basic principles of Hinduism, but they don't really understand what it means. They understand it from the superficial understanding that is going on in the world today, but not the source of it. And Swamiji is reviving that because Swamiji has had the experience and is established in that. I mean, many people cannot digest Swamiji because of various reasons. But um, one thing I want to bring forward in this video is that Guru Tattwa, the universe is made of 36 tattwas and the first tattwa is the Guru Tattwa. So it gives you an idea of the importance of Guru Tattwa. Now, that is full Hindu knowledge. There, this 36 tattwas and how the universe is created and functions, that is full Hindu. It is not in no other religion you will have this kind of knowledge. And um, actually, yeah, now we can say Hinduism is a religion, but it's more than it's more than just a religion because of various reasons. One, 
too many source books, too many traditions. But the very foundation of Hinduism is so different than what the world knows today that the people cannot understand what Hinduism is and that is why they just label it as religion like all the other religions. But actually it is much more than religion. And being afraid of it is silly. Many people have phobia of it because they think it's religion and they're afraid of religion because, because they have experienced other religions and it has not fulfilled them and they did not feel like enriched by them and so they discarded the whole thing. Or maybe they have seen also some fanatics because some religions do create fanatics and that hurts. They, can, they hurt the sentiment of people in various ways. And because of that, you know, they have discarded this whole religion thing. Um, but going back to the tatwas, Guru Tatwa is the first tatwa, is the most, is the number one of the 36 tatwas. If you abuse a guru, you do not know Hinduism. Um, Swamiji was saying, in one satsang he said, and I was very surprised when he shared that, he said, First, when you are seeking, the depth of your seeking will manifest the Guru you need. So it is your seeking which will make the possibility of Guru happen in your life. The more authentic your seeking is, the more sincere your seeking is, the more authentic and sincere of a Guru you will find. Many people feel that Swamiji is talking things that don't make sense and all these things, but it is just because they don't have the seeking to understand it. When you listen deeply to what Swamiji is sharing, there's a lot of sense in what he shares. Yet, yet a lot of born Hindus feel that it is all rubbish and he's talking nonsense. But that's just because they don't have seeking. And, and then they, sh but the thing is that <laughs> these people, they claim to be Hindu because they're born Hindu and that, that's a big problem. I remember also one time Swamiji was saying that a non-practicing Hindu is the biggest problem for Hinduism because a non-practicing Hindu who claims to be Hindu um, is not standing, he doesn't understand and at the end of the day it just makes Hinduism look so cheap and it is not cheap. So many people will claim to be Hindus but because somebody says, I am Hindu, I know, I was born Hindu, I know, you should not believe them. Because Hinduism is something you have to discover. Of course, if you are, if you are born from a Hindu family, chances are that you would have experienced Hinduism. And then you can consider yourself Hinduism. But today, there's many people who are born in Hindu families and they have not experienced anything of Hinduism. They have experienced the lifestyle of the West, the thought currents of the West. But because they're born in a Hindu family, they claim to be Hindu. That is not Hindu. Hindu is not is not a label you get because you were born in a Hindu family. It is something you have to experience. It is something you have to stand for. It is Sanatana Hindu Dharma. It is the, not the eternal knowledge, the eternal Dharma. But for that, you need to experience it. You cannot be born because you're born into it. That doesn't make you um, established in this space that Sanatana Hindu Dharma um, is established or, or the purpose of Sanatana Hindu Dharma. Swamiji was sharing that even if the Guru is not enlightened, if the seeker is sincere in his seeking and, is in, in, and, and in his surrender, he will experience enlightenment. So it is more about the sincerity and the authenticity of the seeking and the surrender which is important in the disciple, in the person who wants to experience the ultimate. Understanding that, we can realize the importance of the guru-disciple relationship. Whether you connect to a guru or not, for various reasons, um, and I'll make a video uh, of why, a few different reasons why Swamji is a real guru, um, unlike what many non-practicing Hindus think. But in this video, I'll stick it to this uh, guru tattwa and surrender um, topic. When you surrender to the Guru, you, the depth of your surrender will, de will depend on the, the depth of you grasping what Sanatana, what Sanatana Hindu Dharma has to offer. When you understand that, you will never abuse a Guru. 
Because if you abuse a guru, you destroy the possibility of the disciples to experience, to become more authentic in their surrender. And that is very, very, it, it's, a, it's a huge karma. You're, you're destroying the possibility of, uh, in many lives, because gurus will have many followers, in them to experience the ultimate. So abusing guru is an anti-Hindu thing. Hinduism is a, is, a, is, a, is a bunch of traditions, many thousands of traditions. There are so many traditions within Hinduism. Each of these traditions, they are established in certain principles, certain Mahavakyas or uh, certain fundamental understandings of Sanatana Hindu Dharma. And through that you can experience moksha, you can experience liberation, you can experience that you are pure consciousness. In each of these traditions, Within Hinduism, each tradition follow their own uh, principle and have their own ways, their own techniques, their own, um, their, own, their own ways of experiencing that we are consciousness. But each tradition agree on three things mainly. First is Om. Om being the cosmic sound, the sound of oneness, the sound of pure consciousness. Each tradition agrees to that. Each tradition agrees to Gomata, cow, worshipping the cow. And why worshipping the cow? And how the cow is the embodiment of all the uh, crores of gods and goddesses of Hinduism. That's going to be another video I'm going to make at some point. And the third one is morning routine. The importance of waking up in the morning, especially uh, before Brahma Murta, and engaging into whatever seva, whatever practice you are doing, whatever initiation you have received from your guru. Another thing which is, as far as I know, present in all traditions, is that each tradition have gurus. Each tradition will have guru. Of course, that guru will be established in the principle of that tradition. But the principle of guru is everywhere within Hinduism. So Guru is a fundamental understanding. It is a fundamental part of Hinduism. Bringing back to the Guru Tattwa, Paramashiva says that he comes in the life of the sincere seeker in the Kamikagama. He says he comes in the life in the sincere seeker in the form of Guru. So when you have a Guru, when somebody decides to take the responsibility of being a Guru, he gives the opportunity to seekers to connect with him or her and to experience the oneness, the surrender and to intensify the seeking. So I just want to say this to put everything together and say that if you abuse gurus, then you have a fundamental deep misunderstanding and it is a proof that you have not experienced Hinduism. Hinduism is not just connecting to the deity, to the Mula Devata or your Ishta Devata. It is not just that. I mean Kula Devata, sorry. Kula Devata or Ishta Devata. It is not only that. Gurus are a fundamental part of the path. And gurus are actually a quicker way of experiencing the path. If you have an opportunity, if you are blessed to, to be alive at a time where there is an authentic guru, then the path to moksha will be faster for you for various reasons. The main reason is the guru relates to you in the way that you cognize, that you understand with your mind. So it is easier for you to relate to and it will be faster for you to walk through, um, through, the, through your karmas and complete and experience the oneness again. So anti-Hindu forces... Um, can even go to the way of saying that people who abuse gurus, they're not Hindus. If you understand the importance and the sacredness of this relationship, and if you understand that there's no other tradition in the world which has this knowledge and which gives this opportunity to a being, 
then you would not abuse it. You might disagree with it, but abusing it is a totally different space. Abusing and slandering a guru is a totally different space. And unfortunately, Hinduism is stuck in that now. And that is brought forward, especially with Swamiji. Because what Swamiji is doing is completely outstanding. And actually, it makes people who are sleeping, it kind of triggers them to, to respond. And unfortunately, what we see in the response is that there's so much violence, which shows that Hinduism has lost, um, has lost a lot. And that is mainly because, you know, being constantly invaded and the tradition being constantly destroyed in various ways with the Mughals and with the, uh, with the British. So, so it is our responsibility as Hindus to stand for Hinduism and to bring, educate people about the depth of Hinduism, fundamental understandings of Hinduism, and help people to have experience for themselves. So that's what I wanted to share in this video. Um, so this, this is basically saying that if you see somebody saying I'm Hindu or if they say they are born Hindu, that doesn't mean anything. They have to prove it. They have to prove that they are Hindu. And abusing gurus is a very strong sign that they are not living Hinduism. They might claim the name Hindu, but they're not living Hinduism. So that's what I want to share in this video. Um, I'll see you guys in another video. Comment if you have any comments, if you want to share anything. Like, subscribe and uh, check out the description below. There's different things such as the Guru Gita, which is one of the most important uh, scripture, um, sacred scripture revealed by Shiva. So uh, yes, talking about the importance and the glory of the Guru. With this, I'll see you guys in the next video. Nityanandam. Uh -huh.